Hello, everyone. Actually, I pressed go live and then I forgot to actually press like the second time go live. So <laughs> like, we're just rolling in. We've got all of the rage because we are talking about all my rage. Uh, all right. to hear. Um, but welcome to the D Diversity is Lit book club. We have monthly discussions um, of a book by a BIPOC author. Um, if you're here, let us know. We are so happy to have you. Cool Gamer, hello, hello. Um, so if you uh, don't know us, we're going to go ahead and introduce ourselves. Um, all of my lovely co-hosts are also linked down below, so please follow them because they're all wonderful and amazing and I love them. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, I will give the disclaimer before we actually start talking about it, but we will be talking spoilers for All My Rage. So if you're okay with that, keep watching. Um, if not, then you can uh, click out, save this, read the book, and then come back because you are not going to want to miss this. <laughs> so if you don't know me, I'm Holly Davis. I'm a kid lit writer working on a YA fantasy, hoping to start um, querying again um, in the summer, which is really exciting. And and I am the host, and I am happy to be here. And I guess we'll go around. <laughs> All right. Hi, everybody. I'm writer Alicia Grumley, and I am a writer of all sorts of genres, but um, especially this month, I am poetry focused. I'm a poet, and happy National Poem Poetry Month to everyone. Yay. And Yes, I was going to say, and if you missed last month's discussion, we talked about um, Call Us What We Carry by Amanda Gorman. So that was our first poetry collection. And I am so excited to be here to talk about All My Rage. And I am just, ah, uh, there's so many feels. I, I mean, if you don't know me by now, <laughs> we'll talk about it later. I'd rather talk about the book. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Teresa Beasley. I write under the pen name T.A. Beasley, and I write contemporary and thrillers. I'm also a podcaster, and I am excited to talk about All My Rage. Ooh. Yes, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Heather Venkat, also known as Write Heather Venkat on the interwebs. And I write uh, YA and middle grade uh, fantasy and contemporary. Happy to be here. I'm Vanessa, uh, Vanessa Marie on all social medias. I'm a YA fantasy paranormal and horror writer, um, indie publisher and diversity reader. Um, and I'm feeling very rageful, so I'm excited to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> like always, that's where I'm always at. I'm always full of rage. So we also, we also you have really this. should never. <laughs> we also have this disclaimer that like, you know, and, and this isn't the first time it's happened, but there have been many times where the host or co-host have finished the book like right before the discussion or the morning of the discussion. So please like just know that if you haven't started reading the book, like even in the first two or three weeks, it's okay because all you have to do is finish before the discussion. So you can join us. It's like just wonderful. It's like you don't have to start right away. I feel like if people are like, oh, I missed it. I'll do the next one. But we'll be happy to have you. So, uh, And I was telling them, I'm like, this is going to be a fast read. You're going to love it. Uh, so before we begin, um, there are a couple of trigger slash content warnings that I want to address in All My Rage. There is drug and alcohol addiction, mentions of repressed sexual assault, physical abuse, Islamophobia, racism, death, and law enforcement. Um, mm -hmm. So, Which uh, I really like because she actually includes those trigger warnings mm -hmm. in the book itself, which I feel like is the first time... I've seen that in one of our picks. Like we have started finding the trigger warnings because what did we read where we were like, I think we need to give people trigger warnings. And we kind of all decided like, we need to find these for you guys. But this I think is the first book that the club has selected that the trigger warnings are in the book itself, which is yes. I think great. I thought there was one other one that had it. Was oh, was there? Okay. I, uh, I can't remember, but I thought there was one other one. Yeah, I think it was a uh, song of wraiths and ruin. Our first one, and then after that, oh, I don't know another one. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a. 
I was using the pun with Heather. I'm like, oh, this book, the book that I was reading, I'm like, this needed a trigger warning, like literally. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry, I had to go there. Um, Lois is here. Hi, hi, friends. I started the book last week and I was worried I wouldn't finish in time. Tricks on me because I devoured this in three days. <laughs> I saw, that's why yeah. I commented because I, sh I saw um, that Lois had been reading it on Goodreads and so I liked it. Mm -hmm. And I said, like, oh, you'll fin, you know, when I saw that she started it, I was like, don't worry, like, it's a fast read. And so then I was worried that I was going to be hyping this book up. Um, but I don't know like what this book did to me, but it did things to me. Like I was yes. not, and like I picked it to read, but I wasn't, I was just like, well, let's just see, like whatever. Like it, it sounds okay, like sure. And I hadn't read anything by Saba to hear before, but then I'm reading it and I'm like, oh my gosh. So literally like I'm halfway through reading this book and I'm reading the physical copy. So like once I finished my audiobook, I picked up the audiobook of her fantasy, um, An Ember in the Ashes and devoured that. So I need to start the other books in this series because I was like, wait a minute, if she writes like this, I got to see what her like fantasy is about. Mm -hmm. um, but suffice to say, I loved this book five out of five. I feel like it's going to be in like my top five, top 10 books of the year um, because it like, it just, everything just played out perfectly. I, I just felt like everything was just just perfect. The pacing, the character arcs, um, the emotion, the, the rage that you felt, um, the writing style I really loved and um, the dual time, like the, the timelines, I felt like that played out just beautifully. Um, so there there are like so many things I can gush about it. And like, literally, I'm like, I don't know what quote I'm going to do because I have like a billion quotes. But anyways, I, so yeah, I gave it five to <laughs> five stars. If you're watching, let us know what you rated or would rate this book um, and, and your thoughts, feels, and opinions. And whoever wants to jump in next can. I mean, anything. I, I think, man, I, I agree with Holly. It was like, what is this thing doing to me? Like, and I was not prepared. This, so this was not one that I voted for. I can't remember what I did vote for, but I did not vote for this because of the trigger warning of um, child abuse, which I am a full-time nanny for everybody that doesn't know. I spend a lot of time with children and I just, I can't deal with that. So, but all of that to say, and all of the trigger warnings that I like, that we experience in the story. I feel like Saba handles so well. Like there's like definite need for the warning, but that it's handled just with grace and eloquence and, but like it resonates, right? Like, oh my gosh, so many of her words just jump off the page. And because this is contemporary, you're involved in the story, at least I was from the get go, you know, like there was no, I have to learn this world like this is our world that we're in and you know it's oh, 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 so much so many feels so yeah it was about a 4.5 for me um I don't know what would have bumped it into the five um maybe just because it was heavy and there were a lot of trigger warnings necessary and I mean it's a story that needs to be told but um I think just for me it was it was a little more heavy than I was prepared for going in. So I was at, I was at about a 4.5. Well, it was about a, it was a five. I agree with Holly. It was a five for me. Um, and this is the first time I've read her work too. So, and I'm glad I started with this book, but um, cause it made me want to go get her other books, but it, it, it was heavy. Um, it did bring out a lot of emotions. Um, Tears, frustration. I wanted to scream at some parts of it. I wanted to punch some <laughs> something yeah. for some parts of it. Quite a few. Uh, I wanted to punch a couple people. I mean, if I could just jump in the pages of this book and just handle the stuff for, you know, Sal and Noor, I think I would have been okay with that <laughs> because it. I could see where their rage came from, and I understand. You know, I can completely understand it. So this is a book that you have to go into knowing that you're going to be emotionally attached to, to the characters. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, as soon as you start it, I mean, with everything that goes on, you're just, you have to know that you're going to be emotionally attached to these characters, because I was. I was ready to fight for them. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I really enjoyed it, though. I really enjoyed the book. Yeah, and I can echo everything that has been said so far. Um, I loved it. I uh, gave it a five out of five on, on Goodreads and also ended up reading most of the book within the last few days. Um, I It was so real and raw. And uh, honestly, the book could have been called like All Our Rage because yes. I just felt mm -hmm. those emotions that they had. And I became really overprotective of them and wanted to, like Teresa said, like I wanted to like, <laughs> it was just so frustrating at times. And like, I know what I would do and I want to do this for them and want to help them out. There's so many like jerks. Like I would say, like in my notes, I'm like, I have blah, blah, like, you know, name jerk, name jerk, name jerk. There's so many people. And I was like, yes. this is real life, you know, real life. Uh -huh. It it was realistic in the fact that like, yeah, like this is this is not uncommon to see people live like this and struggle like this. And um so yeah, it it was heavy, but it was very well done. Agreed. Very well done. So, I um, I loved it as well, um, and I have read uh, Sabah's um, fantasy series, and I loved uh, An, Ember in it, An Ember in the Ashes. So I know I love her writing, um, but I actually did not vote for this one either, because I'm like, mm, contemporary is just not really my thing too much. Um, unless it's like you have to be really, really good, which this was. Not I don't think. Like I don't do the fluffy contemporary. So um, I like I love this. Oh my gosh, um, the the abusive part that is also tough. Um, I'm not a nanny like Alicia. But, um, you know, abusive uh, kids who are from abusive homes has always hit hard for me um, since I was a kid. And that is actually why I studied psychology in college and I got my degree in counseling because I wanted to work with abusive kids, um, abused kids. Although... <laughs> Now I'm actually kind of looking back and thinking, I'm a little bit glad I didn't because I don't know if I could handle their stories day in mm -hmm. and day out every day um, without trying to murder someone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. Yeah, I'm the handcuffs because I'm ready. Um, <laughs> But yes, I love this. Uh, I actually am one of the ones who just finished this like 20 minutes ago, 25 minutes ago, <laughs> right before our live stream. Um, I love it. And uh, I did also finish it in three days, but I, I don't know. Right now, I'm going to say um i'm still riding off the high of, oh, yeah. of this book so right now i think i'm gonna say five stars um and i will put it on my favorites of this year Yay. yeah yeah i think it helps too because like i finished it on um last saturday so i had like all week and like i was asking heather since i was with her you know for most of the week, I'm like, where are you at? You know, because I'm like, I want to talk about, I want to like see where you're at. Like, and I kept, <laughs> and then I found I was like thinking about like the characters and thinking back on like what happened. And so that's a testament to how good the book is, is if you kind of like think about it or you're like, oh, like I wonder what they're up to and stuff. And so it's, it's just, um, yeah, that's another part where it's kind of shows it how uh, much of an impact it has. Um, 
and Lois said, this was an easy five for me. I don't also don't read much contemporary, but I'm so happy I read this. Yes, it's, that's why I'm like, I know, like Lois is always like the mystery thriller, you know, some fantasy. Yeah. Right? But so I was like, oh, yes, okay, good. Because, you know, based on the books you read, sometimes we get in like a thriller. We were on a contemporary like kick last year. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't read some middle grade in a while, so I'm, I've been trying to throw them in, but there's so many good books. That, but anyway, so just I, I try to switch things up to kind of hit all the different um, genres that I know people prefer. Um, I will see um, with this one, I think things uh, really pick up, um, I think, on part three, was it? I can't mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, because when I had first started reading it, um, and I was like a hundred and something pages and I think like a hundred and twenty or thirty pages in. And I was like, okay, I, I'm enjoying this, but I'm like I'm not seeing the hype yet because I know Holly had messaged. <laughs> and I'm like I'm not seeing the hype. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was like, it's good, but I don't know that I would put it as a favorite or put it that high up. And then you get to like, after the part where uh, I think it was where um, Sal finally puts it together, what's going on with Nora, because I didn't put it together until that part too. Mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the techniques I was most excited to talk about because when she would be abused, she kept repeating the, her origin story of coming. And mm -hmm. I was up on it. I'm like, yeah. how is she repeating this to herself? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? And as soon as they said that in that scene, I went, oh okay. my God, that's what she tells herself to exactly. like, distance herself from mm -hmm. the abuse and I just was like oh my gosh but that is so mm -hmm. incredibly well done in my opinion because yeah. outside people even the people that are closest in from what I know and what I've studied um to abuse victims may not even know what's going on right mm -hmm. and like so like the fact that we kind of had that veil over yeah. our faces for a little while as we were reading. I mean, that's like 180 pages in, give or take, maybe even yeah. more than that. And I was just like, oh my gosh. And I, yeah, I page 180. I was like, I wonder if every time she's abused is when she repeats the lines about how she comes to the country. And then of course that is what ended up happening, but it was just like so <laughs> mind boggling because that is like a technique that you would I feel like would translate really well to a screen, right? Because like you never really know what's going on mm. in somebody else's world, like if you're not in scene with them. And like, even though it was told from Noor's point of view, okay. it was, she wasn't acknowledging that she was being hit, that she was being hurt. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, holy cow, like that. I thought that was just brilliant and how realistic it came across and in how, um, just like incredibly tuned into the fact of like survivor mentality Saba is, I feel like, or at least how it comes across on the page that, you know, we can tell ourselves whatever we have to, to survive. And I mean, that's like her dedication, right? To all those who survive and for those who do not. And it was just like, it was like I was walking through a landmine field. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I feel like she also did that well too on the flip side with Sal because there were kind of those, um, like she kind of weaved in everything about his, the sexual assault. And like right. while yeah. I was reading, I was like, yeah. Cause that wasn't explicit either. So I was like, well, why doesn't he want to be touched? And even by Noor, he's kind of thinking about it and and so, and then it wasn't really brought out until the end. So they're like, hey, like you want to see like a therapist and stuff. And and so then I was like, okay, here it is. It, it happened. But like the whole time it was like, what, did this happen? So. Well, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, with Sal, I did pick it up from the beginning. Cause um, mm -hmm. I don't know, I watched a lot of 
um, uh, a lot more there is for you and a lot of stuff mm -hmm. with. Well, and you have a psych degree. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, with Sal, when, um, as soon as they said, you know, he didn't like being touched and even with people close to him, even with Nor, he would flinch and react. And I'm like, that's a PTSD. Uh, so mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's that's PTSD. Uh, something traumatic happened, and I, and I did suspect he was molested, um, and it was sad finding out that confirmation later on from his mom. Um, but I did suspect that uh, for, with Sal. Uh, I, but um, going back to with Nor, I did not like Alicia. I did not uh, put that together until um, Sal did, because I'm like, I I remember when Sal finally put it together, and then I was like, wait, but we've been getting her point of views, and I didn't see anything about physical abuse yet. And then that's when it clicked, her mom shut. She is, her origin story, she tells herself, she is dissociating Mm -hmm. uh, of what's happening and trying yeah. to like you know you know he's he saved me he was the only one who took me he was the only family i've left um and so that's when i was like wow and i agree with alicia that was so well done yeah so. Um, so Sal actually came across in his abuse, like PTSD, which we come to find out to me as I actually wondered if maybe he was on the autism spectrum because of like the not liking to be touched and like the loud noises and the smells of bleach. And I know all of those things can be like sensory overload. And so my mind did not go to PTSD trauma first my mind went oh maybe he's on the spectrum and you know like i kind of thought maybe his parents didn't have the resources to develop that like relationship and knowledge you know because there's so much privilege associated with being able to access resources to you know support autism and to support learning differentiations and to support all of those things. So I kind of wondered if maybe there was like the language barrier. And so it came, it came as more of a surprise to me that when, and I knew child abuse was up like trigger warning, right? But I just was like waiting for it to be mm. so, someone else almost. And I was, um, I will say, this is what I was talking about, like when I said like it was handled really well, I was glad that we didn't get any explicit scenes of mm -hmm. what that child abuse looked like because that would have automatically been a DNF for me. I would have I would have thrown up my hands and said like, I can't finish this because it's just, it's just too much, you know? And so if anybody hasn't read it yet and you're worried about some of these trigger warnings, they are well-placed, but they are, um, not explicit, I would say. I mean, they're, that's not fair to say for all of them. The racism, Islamophobia, all, those are explicit, but it's handled, I feel like, fairly well, but that's from an outsider's point of view. So take that with the grain of salt as it is. Um, but yeah, so it, Vanessa, I'm not surprised knowing the kind of shows that you like that you picked up on the PTSD response and on your background. And for me, I was like, oh yeah, like maybe maybe he's just on the autism spectrum. Like that's that's how I interpreted that. So it was kind of like, oh, oh no. <laughs> oh, like I, I felt myself so many times like kind of like caving in on myself as I was reading, like, <gasps> Oh, like, were, like this really audible bad. gasps and yes. <laughs> like, I forgot about this part that Lois said. There was a part where she mentioned buying foundation and having it hidden among the other items. And I just thought she was being weird about it. And then I realized why. I just um, thought it was part yeah. of her religion yeah. that she didn't yeah. like that Chachu didn't want her wearing makeup because he didn't want her like getting the attention well, that yeah. Chachu um Chachu is not religious at all, and he didn't even want her participating yeah. in religion. 
But mm -hmm. I just, um, I just thought like he was strict and overbearing in one of those um, like helicopter parents guardians yeah. that uh, you know didn't want her doing certain things. But I, um, like I said, I didn't put the physical abuse together. Mm -hmm. I think um, this this line that Lois says, I was surprised and almost upset at myself for missing the signs that Nora was being abused. And like, that's that just made me think about like, hey, like, you know, look at how upset you were for not noticing the signs and think about how mm -hmm. Auntie Mizba felt yeah. knowing it. And, and not doing. Not doing anything about it. Anything about so, it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I watch a lot of the same shows too, Vanessa. Um, I'm a big Law and Order SVU, so I did pick up on Sal. But I was trying to figure out why his father was drinking so much. And then when it got to the part where they explained Sal's situation, I was like, he must be drinking to kind of forget about what happened at that moment at the end with Sal and them finding him in the laundry room. Right. So I was like, okay, that he felt, I guess he felt he couldn't protect him because he does say a line later on in the book where he wasn't there for Sal, he wasn't there for Ama. Yeah. So I was like, you know, like okay. Fathers protect their children. Like, yeah, that's fathers protect, thinking yeah. Like, yeah. Like thinking back on that, knowing what yeah. Sal finds out, when, I think it's like makes those words so much worse for his father to hear, even for, yeah. in that kind of drunken state. Um. One of the things before we get too far off of the topic of abuses, and I don't know if anybody saw it, but after the acknowledgement, so the very last page of the story, Saba includes numbers to the national hotlines for domestic violence, national child abuse, national sexual assault, uh, uh, network for immigration and refugee rights, children's defense fund, women of color network. So like this is an incredible resource that she made sure to have included in the back of the book. And I just, I really appreciate that because if you're going to deal with topics like she deals with and deals with very well, as we've all kind of said, um, I think that having your platform and like showing places where you can get help is also an important part of that. So I thought that was a really well piece of it. It's not just how it's handled in the story. She's treating her readers like, you know, she knows you personally. And I think that is one of the things that makes the story so um high star for everybody you know yeah, i love that also yeah. the, um at the end of the audio book it it goes over the hotline awesome. as well nice. that's great oh. <sighs> yeah i and you know what i will say about sal's and as we're talking about the abuse like when he is in jail okay so spoiler alert sal tells drugs goes to jail <laughs> okay there it is <laughs> <laughs> Glaze over that fact because there's so many other crazy, amazing things happening, right? Not that selling drugs is amazing, but <laughs> when he's talking to Dr. Ellis in jail and he says, like, my body remembers, but my mind doesn't need to. And I was like, oh, that is like beautiful. Like, and you know, like, I think that speaks really well to the healing journey because not everybody's healing journey is the same like you don't have to know all the details to heal from it you don't have to know these things um so the fact that like he almost got confirmation like that his, what his body was telling him like his his sal language right like what that language was telling him he was interpreting correctly i thought was just a very um like emotionally eloquent way of handling how an abuse victim may choose to deal with their abuse that, that like she was um sorry i wasn't laughing at you really <laughs> no it was emotion I, was laughing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I just see <laughs> right but but i think that does speak well too because you know noor deals with it differently she deals with it by running away by choosing to you know fight by going to college by never going back by finally standing up for herself and by saying enough that she can say like i've paid for this i paid 
in every blow that you laid on this body and, and every time you tried to claim a piece of me, I paid you back for you coming to rescue me. Right. Mm -hmm. And like Sal says, I don't need to know the details. I don't need to have justice for that. I am validated in knowing that I'm not crazy, that there's a reason for it. And then that's okay. And I think that's really important to see because we have these, um, you know, juxtaposition of them. They play so nicely, like each other's strengths and weaknesses, right? They balance each other out mm -hmm. so well. And I'm talking about Noor and Sal, of course, mm -hmm. that, um, it's just really nice to see how like kind of a similar situation can have different outcomes and that those are both valid, I think. Kind of like how each of them deals with that, the, the, the childhood trauma that they've, they've gone through. And even um, uh, for um, Sal's dad, Teresa, I think they had said his parents had died and that's when he had first started drinking and that's mm -hmm. how he was coping with things versus you know for example sal's like he's dealing with it by like trying to fix everything trying to mm -hmm. like you know get the money trying to honor his mother you know all of these other things and you know for nor i felt like she was um trying to get what she wanted but was still being cautious you know by like hiding the you know the fact that she was applying to college and all that stuff but I'm really glad like at the end that, you know, Chachu was arrested, you know, for, so mm -hmm. it's, it's not just that like she was able to escape, but he also kind of was able to, you know, be punished for what he had done. Um, so we sort of got that closure mm -hmm. and, you know, it's hard because you feel like, you know, reading through it, I thought it was interesting how they, that, that Sava chose to um, do Mizba's point of view um mm -hmm. in terms of like going back into the past and so we know all about i think tofik was the was sal's father like mm -hmm. we know all about him but through the eyes of sal through the eyes of his mother mm -hmm. um and it, it just i it was just really really interesting to see how she told those stories mm -hmm. yeah, yeah so i like that she in i'm sorry Holly. oh no you go um I like that she included um, Ama's voice in those stories because mm -hmm. the whole time when she passed, I was thinking that she was telling Nor to tell Sal to forgive her. Yeah. Oh, and and then I get, or everyone, you know, but then you get to it and Sal's like, no, she was saying forgive she was telling that to Nora to forgive her because she didn't help her and she didn't save her. Oh, and I was like, cool. oh, I was like, oh. I literally, when it was her last scene, and she, like as she's dying and she's like, forgive, dot, 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 dot. Yeah. And I just oh. went, oh, no, oh. Read. <laughs> I, like, I was down. like, oh my God. <laughs> That was that was a very emotional part for me because yeah. I'm like, okay, even though she's taking her last breath, she still is thinking about, and you know, someone. Nora and being them being safe. And I mean, even though she did all this stuff and she still put up with her husband drinking the way he was and not really being there, trying to do oh, all that herself. So technically being a single parent. I know. Why right. she's, you know, and trying to keep this business running mm -hmm. so they, and knowing they didn't have that much, but that part was really, really emotional for me. Yes. Because I'm like, uh, I was like, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep reading this book. <laughs> I think like, I, that's what I really liked was there were a lot of things that happened that I didn't expect. Like at first it's like, oh, Sal like had rejected Noor and they had been friends for a long time and he's dating someone else. And then all of a sudden, like now they they broke up and he's like kind of, you know, realizing that he does have feelings for Noor. And I was like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. And then of course, like, like one of my favorite scenes um, or kind of like collection of scenes were um, the trial where um, mm -hmm. like Sal's attorney is just like, goes against what he says he's going to do and like throws Noor under the bus. And I was like, he did not, oh my gosh. Like, and now Noor's gonna think that Sal's like doing this to her. 
and then for him to like redeem himself by like speaking on the podium and mm -hmm. confessing everything and freeing her and that was like his ultimate like you know gift of love um and so like it was heartbreaking because it's like you never be like oh the main character is going to jail like it's just, like it was like no like this isn't supposed to happen like what like so it's just there were but you know but then because he was so honest and everything he got his sentence reduced and um they dropped some charges and things like that so it just was like it it was it was so like hard hitting because there were so many things that i didn't expect which was like just made it all the more um powerful oh man there yeah like well and i was like from the second he started selling drugs i was like okay he's obviously going to get caught this is obviously going to be a problem <laughs> I like, no idea. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but i did not expect nor to go down with him for it like you know i was like mm -hmm. oh no oh okay no 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 like i'm just like going no no this isn't happening no. <laughs> well and then art gets away with it and you're like hey yeah. yep. Well, and, but I mean, and they talk about that, right? And like, yeah. I, I like how he makes Art kind of pay for that too, right? Mm -hmm. Like, cause he makes him go get her UCLA acceptance letter. Mm -hmm. And he's like, he's, it's like this or it's gonna be an ass kicking and you can pay it. <laughs> <laughs> I got my boots on today. <laughs> you know, and, and like, but I mean, of course Art gets away with it. Art's a rich white boy and they kind of point that out, right? Like, yeah. I'm not. I'm, that, that's the other thing that like also frustrated me when I was reading it is like the scene where um, they get stopped and pulled over because he was speeding and stuff. And I was like, you know, I get him being pulled over for speeding and stuff. But if this was art, if this was, you know, a rich Jamie? Woman, <laughs> yeah, Jamie or Jamie. Yeah. yeah. He would not have been pulled out of that car and the mm -hmm. car would not have been searched. Been searched. Mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, I mean, Noor talks about that in that scene. She's like, I've seen so many times where like it, it just exasperates them so i try and stay quiet and then i can't you know and like he didn't do anything he didn't hit me and like she knows what they're going to think she knows mm -hmm. what they're going to think and she's not wrong you know <laughs> like they they play exactly it plays out exactly as she thinks it's going to and it's really unfortunate that that's the way things are and it's but also it speaks to Saba's skill as a storyteller that we all reading it know exactly what she's talking about in today's climate. If you've been following yeah, along yeah. in the news, you know, like, yeah. you know, you know, they say like, oh, you know, law enforcement's like, just, you know, say you're guilty, you'll get off easier and all this stuff. And it's just like, yeah, that's realistic because it's a, Cruddy system. The system is broken. And yeah, and they were saying that about Nor. Like, oh, they already decided. Like, she's already, you know, guilty. Yeah, guilty. You know, you can't change anything. Mm -hmm. You should just get guilty away by from. association. Yeah. Yeah, we all almost need to like have like little like GoPro cams facing us as we're reading, and like, <laughs> like <laughs> we're just hilarious this time. I mean, I, there was definitely a point where I was like this. I was like. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> like that would be hilarious like behind the scenes. Like I would just love to see, like reader cam, you know, like you just like that's, what, down. that's why people do reading vlogs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. They yeah, do. Like, I feel like a reading vlog for this would have been oh. hilarious because we could have <laughs> what did I just do? Well, oh, I do have GoPro cameras though. Yeah, let's I have see a bunch of GoPro. <laughs> you do? <laughs> yeah, we use them. We use them for car scenes. My husband oh, uses yeah. them for car scenes when we're yeah. filming. That's how we get our inside car shots. That's hilarious. Street shots. So we could do that. Oh. <laughs> 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 I was. I agree with Holly though about what she said in earlier that you know the pacing was just perfect. I felt like there was never a moment where I was like, oh, like the pace, like it slowed down. It hasn't ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like from page one to the end, you're just boom, 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 boom. Like and you know you're 
spinning and turning and trying to keep up. And so yeah, the pacing I feel like is great. But I mean, I heard Jamie's name mentioned. Should we talk about that? Oh, Jamie. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh. Teresa, did you want to say something? I saw you were starting Oh. To... oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do not like bullies. No. I do not like people who bully other people. That is not bothering them, have not did anything to them, and mm -hmm. you just pick on them. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't care where you come from. You should not be bullying people. And Jamie got under my skin. Oh, <laughs> she really. Oh, really oh. Oh. UCLA is your backup. So. Oh. You know, and then oh, you're undocumented and. Oh. Uh. And so she made a big point of that. Upset, I'm sure during that. Oh, <laughs> I was. <laughs> We're eight. We're like, this is not just. This is not okay. We yes. Like, have to stand up for Jamie. And like, as we're reading this, I'm sure, uh, Teresa, I'm sure this is exactly what you're doing because this is exactly what I was doing. I'm like, I'm going to punch this bitch. I'm yes. going to punch yes. her yes. this now, and yes. it's going to be fine. I am. I was like, and I want to hit her in her throat right now. <laughs> in her throat. <laughs> Somebody should. Like, Somebody oh. should show her. <laughs> Touch these hands. I was like, <laughs> she is bringing out the violent side. <laughs> I wanted to choke that girl. Listen, all my rage doesn't stay that far below the surface anyway, and it boils. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was I was hot when I got to that part. Oh. Yeah. But I will say this is a book that you know how some books, when you're reading them, you put them down, you take a break from them. This is a book that when you start it, you don't want to take a break from it. You're just, right. it's flowing and you want to just keep going. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, which, like you said, she's a great storyteller. Yeah. Yeah, I think part of that is like, you know, the the, the frequent, you know, switching of the points of view. Yeah, mm -hmm. Lois said that the like shortest, short, shortest chapters. Yep, short, exactly. yes. Like some of Ms. Yes. Buzz were like a page and a half, and then it's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to stop here. I'm going to keep going. And yeah, exactly what Lois said. Um, yeah, there's no good stopping point for like a night. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. thankfully, not right. thankfully, Jamie got what was coming to her because yes. people were like, yes. well, if you're going to say these racist things, we are going to record it and play it for and, and then actually then recorded it too yes, yes she right. did yes i was like oh uh, i was so happy yeah she's like well i thought i'd send it to other places but actually ashley had one of my favorite quotes from the story as a whole because um when she and noor are kind of like getting um like to be friends ish, you know, like when she's talking mm -hmm. to her, when she drops off her homework that Sal had been collecting for her on page 292. Uh, Noor says, let's see, hold on, where is it? Um, it's the last like couple sentences before the page break, right? And it's, it says, Your makeup is always beautiful. It's armor. Ashley shrugs as she walks away, makes the world and all its bullshit feel further away. And I yeah. love that. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Like so many times, you know, like there's nothing that a good shade of red lipstick can't cure. You know. <laughs> like if, if I'm if I'm having a having a day, you know, like throw on a little bit of red, like yes. and, and it is it's armor and like it's it was so interesting this concept of makeup being armor because it and Nora relates to that. She understands what that is. The armor, the makeup that covers the bruises, you know, like she mm -hmm. gets that. And so it's like this really nice beginning to a friendship where, you know, and I mean, Ashley's a victim too. She's a victim of her own drug abuse. You know, I mean, we can't skip over the fact that she nearly dies. Died, yeah. Story. And she has a two-year-old child and, you know, like, um, and, you know, I think it's so interesting because Sal, like, is the problem, right? Because he sold her the drugs mm -hmm. and he fixes it because he levels with her mom and says, you know, my dad's not a dad right now. And like he condemned her, but saved her at the same time, which, you know, mm -hmm. people don't always get a chance to fix their to mistakes. Do that. Yeah. Right. So, true, and true. She, she, yeah, Sabah just has this like really great push pull dynamic mm -hmm. like yeah and it, it's very balanced you know like mm -hmm. very, very balanced. yeah let's go into some other quotes 
Uh, one that I liked was on page 168. Um, where Noor says, great passions grow into monsters in the dark of the mind. But if you share them with loving friends, they remain human. They can be endured. Mm -hmm. I thought that was just beautiful because that's like a lesson that she's teaching up, you know, herself and us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, towards the end, uh, page 365, Sal, like the, the quote, well, there were several quotes where they were talking about rage, um, but at the end when uh, he says, rage can fuel you, but grief gnaws at you slow. I don't want to face the grief. I still don't, mm -hmm. but I think I have to try. And, you know, and then we see that play out where, you know, when he, when he can actually, you know, visit, um, you know, his mom's grave and just kind of gets that, that peace and closure, you know, he's kind of, able to sort of move on and he, you know he's like okay i'm i'm trying yeah um, to finally get to visit her yeah it was just super yeah. powerful for me too because you know even though it's called all my rage it's like there's other emotions built into and surrounding the rage um that you know grief is that one that like i'm i'm glad that she had explicitly mentioned it in there mm. um, because you know he he lost more than just like he lost a lot of things throughout the whole book um and at first you think oh okay you know he's he's upset he lost his mom but he, he lost a lot more um than just that and he is still able to move on yeah he was so even powerful. saying like that he was lose you know like uh losing ama's dream like when mm -hmm. the clouds rest like yeah i really um speaking of you know how you wrote the title on my rage um i really liked the title for this because you know rage associated with anger anger is a secondary emotion and when you look behind the anger you can see you can find out what's really there and a lot of times it's hurt pain fear mm -hmm. um frustration and so we see all of that underneath um the rage mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. so powerful yeah and she kind of like um uh not uses it for good but shows how it's like rage can be fueled in different ways. It's not necessarily this bad connotation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I, so I love the poem that is split up as the sections, like the first, like, like prelude to the sections, right? And it, I just looked it up online and it is divvied up in those six stanzas as we see it in front of each of the six sections. And that poem talks about like losing things. And like, I think by the time we're at the end of the book, both of them have lost 98% of their rage, right? And I mm -hmm. would argue that they won't necessarily be able to keep it all the way gone always 100% because there is trauma that we see, you know, that we know they both have. Um, but I think the implication is that as long as they are together that they can keep that rage at bay. So like they lost their rage, which was important to them to keep because it protected them. And mm -hmm. like it's, it's, But like, if you look at the arc of that poem, it talks about like how losing one thing and like how even that poem is like tied through to the story because it starts with the art of losing isn't hard to master. And then it, the last line is it's evident the art of losing is not too hard to master though it may look like it, write it like disaster. And it's just like that poem just encompasses that whole entire story of like, we had so much and like, it, it feels like a like a gas tank in a mm -hmm. carol, right? Like, it's like, you're at a full tank of rage and then you kind of dial it back and you know, just mm -hmm. like, it was a disaster and they had to go through that whole disaster in order to like lose all that rage. And that mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. I thought that was like, 
Mwah, chef's kiss. Oh, I love that. Right? <laughs> oh, I would love that, right? <laughs> yeah, I need to like read it all as like a poem because of course you catch that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. I'll, uh, I'll send the link to the poem that I found as I found it in oh, the you. comments. Would that work? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Um, Lois said, as someone who has a personal experience with an alcoholic parent, the interactions between Sal and Abu really hit home for me. This quote sums up so much of that dynamic. I know addiction isn't logical. I had that one written down too. I love that one. Yeah. Um, Abu loves me, but right now his need for oblivion is greater than that love. Until he can change himself, that's how it's going to stay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was one of the so ones fun. I wrote down too. Nice. Yeah. yeah, that's so powerful. Wow. It's good that you uh, can like see that you can relate. Like when when someone writes about something, you're not like, well, this isn't realistic. Like you can relate to it, and it's more so kind of like honoring and being able to heal instead of like you know. Mm -hmm. What were you gonna say, Teresa? Um, I also like the the very last page where it's still uh, it's um, Ama. She's the last chapter. And on, she's talking about uh, Sal, her children. <laughs> oh, my children, my little ones, I have such dreams for you both. The world is right, finally. For here in this sweet deep night, I see now that you were always two halves of a whole, two hands interlaced, two voices raised to a melody sung in time. Bear witness then to the beauty of each other's lives. Bear witness and burn bright as one. The white around me dims, a gentle embrace, my Baba, his dark eyes kind steps out of the blue. He offers a hand. Come now, little butter butterfly, he says. Time to sleep. Mm -hmm. My Baba, his dark eyes kind step out of the blue. He offers a hand. Oh, I love it. Oh, my goodness. I know. Well, and like for her dad oh. to be the one that greets her, like, greets and her. her into her room. Oh. Like that's so good because I'm not like her like it's so interesting because her mom and hers relationship, Miss Buzz mom and her relationship was so tumultuous. You could just tell mm -hmm. you know? but you never get to see like any of that. So that's like so interesting because I feel like she is um a good mom, you know, even though she yeah. is she dies with this regret of not having enough time to save Noor. Like Sal right. saves her at the end. She saves herself and Sal saves her. Like they save each other. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. to be like, it's her dad that greets her, and like, there's you can tell like that's the parent that she wanted to emulate. She didn't yes. want to emulate, right. and like she made it yeah. really intentionally to be the kind of parent that her dad was, rather than the one that her mom was. Her mom. And I thought like it was just so good. I yes. I really like the fact that you know she's calling you know her she's calling Noor like you know her daughter like as one of her mm -hmm. own and i think that was one strong theme throughout the book is that you know family sometimes you know family is 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 better off sometimes not even your 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 own family because mm -hmm. for noor she was kind of taken in a little bit by um imam shafiq mm -hmm. and his mm -hmm. wife uh what was her name Na khadija uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Khadija. Khadija. And, you know, so yeah. they, and then, um, you know, there were, in, you know, and she was calling like Mizba, like Auntie Mizba, mm -hmm. and like, you know, how other people can be really close to you and still care for you. Um, I really liked how, uh, actually, um, I don't know why I, I caught it on page, where is it? Um, it was page 161 where the teacher actually like pulled Nora aside after she got her first F and she was like kind of showing some concern. She's like, oh, hey, is everything OK? And I, you know, I feel like a lot of times in the books we read, like the teachers aren't that great. But I know no. you know, there are teachers who are like, <laughs> hey, you normally get like A's, A minus, you know, you're, you get fairly good grades. Like this is sort of unusual, like, mm. but then obviously Nor, you know, isn't going to like confide in her. but just showing how there are other adults who are like looking out for them mm. and trying to help. Um, and it just made it that more, much more realistic, I think, because it is true. Sometimes, you know, you, you would trust another adult more than a family member. Mm -hmm. to go to them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's true. That's true. Oh, and I also liked how Noor didn't forgive Sal when he first was like, yes. oh, I'm so sorry. She's like, yeah, yeah no, it we're do we're done. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, I felt like that was realistic in the in the way that she wasn't just like immediately going back to him and mm. um, showing how sometimes it is hard to, for you know, she wanted to try to forgive, but it was just difficult. And that wasn't to say she wasn't going to forgive him. But for, for a good while, she was like the liar. Like she was calling him the you know, liar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It said to him that like you're worse than than him, meaning Chachi. It's like you're worse than mm -hmm. him. I knew I knew what he was, but you I trusted you. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I trusted you. Yeah. But okay, can we also talk about how she sends him the books that she's reading? Oh okay. yeah. Oh, I was not mm, not prepared. <laughs> It was like too sweet and too like okay. <laughs> I have hope that they got together, you know, because like she, yeah. she came, you know, she was there at the um, cemetery. I know um, she was there. So it's like they kind of they did get their happy ending, even though it was like we were kind of afraid what was going to happen. I I was thinking about that. I'm like they could just stay apart. Like this isn't like. A romance you know this there's a romance right. plot that i'm like so i was like Shh, like sabah could be like yep nope this yeah. is gonna be tragic so <laughs> i was a little upset we didn't get to see more time with them together fully happily healthily real life yeah. you know like more like whole like i mean I, I wanted to see i wanted to see a little bit more of their happy ending but that's that's <laughs> Maybe that part the 4.5 because I was mad I didn't get enough to happen. <laughs> That's where your rage came in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't like <laughs> there, uh, there are a few uh, couple quotes that I uh, wanted to bring up as well that I love. Mm -hmm. um, so the first one is on page 239 and um, uh it's actually it starts i think on the bottom of 238 um where he says my body knows it i think that that's why control is important to me but i don't remember this bad thing not remembering it makes it feel like it didn't happen and if it didn't happen then i don't know why i'm broken you're not broken a part of me is broken i say uh, saying I'm not erases the fact that someone did something horrible to me. It erases that I survived. But yeah, maybe I'm broken, but I'm strong too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good. One of um, one of the reasons uh, I really picked on that quote, I loved it and picked up on it, is because um, in one of my writing groups recently the um, topic of mental health came up and um, how we depict that and portray that and, you know, doing it in a way that's sensitive and not um, because, you know, we already have a lot of messages saying if you have a mental illness, if you have a disability, if you have, um, if you're different in any way, you're broken. Right. Um, but that's not the case for a lot of people don't feel that's the case for them. Um, and some do, which is fine, but it's it's kind of harmful to have that as a message as if everyone who experiences that is that way. And so I like the way she um, I like the way she handled this and showed how like, yeah, um, you know, Sal does see himself as broken, but he doesn't necessarily see that as a bad thing. And he can also recognize his strength within himself as well. And so I thought that was really good and really powerful. I love that. Um, <laughs> the most is still too long. <laughs> There's um, 
push Tennessee real quick. There was a, I think two other quotes I wanted to uh, point out, or maybe three. <laughs> but um, there's one on 280. This is on 280. Um, I, I think this is with Iman, I think. Uh, I could be wrong. I forget. Um, but uh, let me see. Okay, so it starts where it says, um, why does God why does God do it? I say. Why should we pray? Why believe it at all? Because what religion, many religions really offer is comfort when it's all too much. A reason for the pain, a hand in the darkness, if we reach for it. What if it's not real? I say, the hand. What if you reach for it and it disappears? I'm not going to tell you what's real and what isn't, Shafiq says. That's for you to decide. But I do think the hand is what we need it to be, not what we want it to be. Mm. And um, I really like that one as well. I appreciated that one because, um, you know, there's, I think, um, you know, a lot of people find comfort in religion, which is awesome, which is great. But then you have some people who are very, like, pushy with it. And, like, because it's good for me, it should be good for everyone else, too. And so you have to believe this way and and um, be the same. And so I like that he's like, you know, that's for you to decide, you know, um, what, what works for you and what doesn't. Um, because I think we all have to decide for ourselves what works and for some religion works and for some it doesn't. So I like that she had that in there. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, let's see, it was on, kind of towards, the end, or there's one before that, um, 284, uh, I think this is Ms. Vest's chapter, yeah, and she's talking about Sal and Noor and their language, uh, the way they play, and she says, they were not kittens, these two, they were small, careful birds, chirping in a language only they knew language of pain and memory. Mm -hmm. um, that was, um, uh, there's a real kid. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I'm <laughs> He chirps. Watch <laughs> there. <laughs> You're yeah, chirping, and so he started chirping. We don't know what he said. <laughs> he wanted to join the conversation. Hey, what? <laughs> yep. yep. He um, wants his dinner. So <laughs> <laughs> yes. Even uh, though the automatic feeder went off. <laughs> the last one um, that I'll bring up is on 349. And again, this is Ms. Chapter. Um, and uh, we kind of started from the beginning. She's like, how quickly a body can betray you it will carry you your whole life and suddenly finish. It will carry your soul no longer. Did the soul grow too weary for the body? Did the body grow too weary for the soul? Was it a betrayal of organs and tissues and use and cells? Or was it or was the betrayal that I did not care for the body the way I should have? That when my body was screaming for aid, I ignored it in service of what the soul wanted which was the comfort and routine of fami familiarity. So who was the traitor truly, the body or the soul? Um, and that one I picked out, I really like because I'm like, unfortunately I don't listen to my body the way that I should. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, that's, that's kind of a good message. Like we, we need to listen to our bodies more. Yes. Mm -hmm. And know it they're not gonna betray us <laughs> yeah it's like she you know she didn't 
I think for her, she didn't go to dialysis because of, mm-hmm. of the cost. Um, but she knew that that was, you know, probably what would have, you know, helped her, her get better. And, you know, I think it lends itself to the fact that, you know, sometimes, I mean, it's, it's a disparity now that, you know, some people can't get the care that they need because of, you know, health insurance issues, which is Mm -hmm. obviously an unfortunate thing, but it, you know, kind of, it, it wasn't really her fault. Yeah. Um, and it's it's like a sad kind of tread reality in this, you know. And I remember thinking that early on when they talked about her uh, needing certain treatments, but they couldn't afford it and couldn't get it. And I and I was just thinking that's how effed up our healthcare system is. Yep. It's like it's a privilege for the rich and wealthy not for those who can't afford it, which healthcare should be a right for everyone. Right. Yeah. And it shouldn't be so darn expensive. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, uh, to wrap things up, I really appreciate this book because it brought up so many tough topics and helped us learn through, you know, learn from all of these experiences and, um, I'm really grateful that I that we were able to read this book. Um, and if you would like to keep talking about the book, we have our forums on uh, Goodreads um, in the Diversity is Lit uh, book club group. So please join um, and continue the conversation uh, and share fun things. Um, and also join us for our April. I was like, what month is it? <laughs> it's April, but it's. I, it's snowing outside. It's like yeah. and sticking. Crazy. Snowing, yeah. Sticking. So, anyways, <laughs> um, join us for our April book of the month pick, which is Gods of Jade and Shadow. Ooh. I just got it in the mail today because I ordered it. Um, I don't know if Lois is still here, um, but she had posted on Instagram. She bought a book from, I think it was like thriftbooks.com or something. And I'm like, hmm, what's that? That sounds nice. So I got this used copy, um, a hard hardcover, uh, and thankfully it's not like oh we're we're uh, we've been um, picking books that like oh it comes out on the first day or in a week or something. Right. <laughs> 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 it's been out for a while in 2016. Yes. <laughs> Try to pick some ones that are a little bit older too to make it better. Oh yes, Lois is here. Thrift Books is so okay. amazing. Yes. So that it just came in today. I'm like perfect because I need to show it during the live stream. <laughs> so I just picked can... mine up from the library nice. like before this call. I got mine a couple of days ago from the library. I knew you were the first person in line for that hold. I knew it. Because yes. Teresa and I are in the same library system. So yeah. I one hold on it. And I'm like, dang it. I know where it is. And not only are we in the same system, but our home library is the same library. So yeah. It's, yeah. it's like there was one copy available in our home library. And I was like, I know why it's not, Teresa. <laughs> I was like, Alicia's going to kill me because I'm going to get this for her. Also, I see Alicia. It's fine. It was fine. They they got it to me. And I mean, you know, they, they do a great job. Like, please, you do what you can. But yes. Alicia's so. got the um, bookmark, too, that I have um, and give away for free. So if you would like um, a diversity zip bookmark, let me know and I will mail it to you. Um, yeah. And... I think that wraps things up. Oh, oh, um, Lois also said, and it's good for the environment because you know <laughs> I, have been, I have been buying from the big places, so it's good to support some. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right, everyone. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us for our discussion of all my rage. So wonderful. Always happy to have you here. Thank you again to my co-host. Thanks for popping in, Lois, and chatting with us. It was a lot of fun, and we will see you guys next month. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye.